So today I found out that in the dollhouse is actually a member of a bronies Pokemon group who called themselves the Abnormalities of Equestria. Now the reason why I took a lot of interest in this group is because these bronies actually specialize in unorthodox Pokemon sets. Like everybody in the group, you know, uses unorthodox stuff. So most of the things that they use, like you won't see on Smogon. So I met a lot of the members today and, you know, I was just really intrigued and I wanted to get a lot of battles in with various people and uh, there weren't too many members there, but one member in particular who goes by the name of Mighty Bison was there and supposedly he's like the Twilight Sparkle of the group. Like, he make, he comes up with like more than 50% of the sets that all of them use and... You know, the people that were there, they really wanted to see me battle him, and he was interested in battling me since In the Dollhouse told him a lot about me. So, when I first saw his team, I was thinking, well, his Dragonite's probably a special attacker. His Vaporeon is probably offensive, but then again, it could be a tank, because who else would be the special tank? His Arcanine could be a special attacker or a mixed attacker. You know, Hidden Power, Ice, Dragon Pulse, Overheat could work on Arcanine. His Claydol is probably a tank of some sort. His Mian Shao could be a Swords Dancing set or a mixed attacking set. And then his Rotom, I don't really know how Rotom could be unorthodox. Maybe like Confuse Ray and Thunder Wave, like Parafusion or something. But I figured that um, he was either going to begin with his Claydol, Mian Shao or his Rotom, and, you know, those are pretty much the best leads that he could begin with, unless his other three Pokemon are, like, really good leads that I don't know about, so I felt really safe beginning off with the uh, Salamence, you know, since if he begins with any of those three Pokemon, Salamence can get the jump on them, but he's actually going to begin with Sagat the Dragonite, which I was not expecting, so automatically here I was thinking that he was probably that tank set with Thunder Wave and Roost, so I switch out immediately because I'm Choice Scarf and Thunder Wave and Choice Scarf equals fail, so I send in Bullet Head and here he's going to go straight for the Outrage, so at first I was thinking he was probably Choice Scarfed, but then by the damage this did, I was like, that did way too much damage, so this Dragonite is probably Choice Banned, but thank goodness that Bullet Head is Timid. That way I'm at least able to cut in front of uh, this Sagat and break his multi-scale because that would have been pretty disappointing if he got a free KO on like the first two turns. So that critical hit didn't matter since he got minimum damage with that last, uh, the first outrage hit. So now I'm just going to send an Argival to revenge kill this guy with Dragon Claw. I did not want to go for the outrage because... Even though I'd get a Moxie boost, he could send in his Vaporeon, who's probably a tank, and he could just Ice Beam and take out my uh, Choice Scarf Sweeper, so I want to keep him around for right now, and now he's going to send in Ken, so I'm not really sure if he knows that I'm Scarfed right now or what, so I'm just going to switch out into Swampert, because I'm thinking, well, he's probably going to Flare Blitz or Close Combat, but here Ken actually pulls a bag out, and he goes for the Will-O-Wisp, so... That was indeed a bag of hidden tricks because, uh, I don't know, I didn't expect Arcanine to have Will-O-Wisp. Like, I've never seen that on Arcanine before. So, now he switches out into Dalsim, I guess, thinking that I'm going to go for an Earthquake. But I just go for Rocks because, I know, Earthquake probably wasn't going to do much. And Rocks are important. And he's going to go for Rocks himself, so... I figure, alright, I'm just going to start going for Ice Beam, try to get some damage off this Clay Doll, and that really does anything, so it's pro it's probably a special wall, most likely, or a mixed wall or something, or it's just naturally bulky, and here he's going to go for the Rapid Spin to spin the rocks away, so uh, that was pretty interesting, the Life Orb recoil that I just saw, that was interesting to me, because... Uh, I was wondering, you know, why does he have life orb with a rapid spinner? That's normally a waste of life, in my opinion. But uh, here he's going to call back Dalsim, and he's going to send an Armika, the Vaporeon, and he's going to easily take this predicted ice beam. So that was a good play on his part. And here, I figure that 
it's probably going to go for a scald, maybe a wish, maybe a protect or whatever. So I just try and go for stealth rocks while um, Armika goes for surf. And unfortunately, Armika ends up scoring a critical hit. So I'm not able to get my uh, rocks up unless it was like choice specs, then it wouldn't have mattered. But I think the crit mattered. So now I'm going to send in Madam Sticks, and I know that that's going to force Armika out, so I'm just going to go for the Thunder Wave, and Blanca is going to get Thunder Wave, so I figured that Blanca would probably come in, so I didn't want to just go straight for the Leaf Storm, so now I'm going to go for the Hidden Power Fire, just to start, you know, destroying this thing, since I'm not sure what it wants to do, and I suppose I get some payback here, because Madam Sticks ends up scoring a critical hit as well, so... I suppose that's payback for what happened to Purple Gel, but Blanca is still able to put up a light screen, so even though it's going to fall the following turn, it still has, um, I know it still played a role, I guess a minor role in supporting the team. So I, I suppose, uh, it still kind of worked out for him in a way, and I pretty much figured that, um, since he's sending in Cami this Mianch, he's going to go for the U turn. So I send in 12 gauge to take that because after he U-turns, he's not going to have anything that wants to take a close combat or a stone edge, but he predicts that very nicely and goes for the Aura Sphere. And when I saw Aura Sphere, I was thinking, well, this is most likely especially offensive Mian Chao, but that was, that was a pretty sick prediction on his part. I wish I had sent in Caesar, but I don't know. I guess I was just trying to uh, really get the jump on him and... Now he's going to withdraw Cammy. I bluff the Choice Band, Bullet Punch, and here I'm just going to go for the U-Turn, and this actually works out more in his favor, and the reason why is because I have to send in the Pokemon first, and since I send in Salamence, he's going to be able to send in, you know, a counter to Salamence, so I suppose I could have went for Bullet Punch or even Pursuit just to get off some damage, but now he's going to easily be able to send in Ken to intimidate and cut the attack down, so I'm going to withdraw because from this point, I really need uh, Salamence to have max attack, and if something had to be burned, I would rather it be Caesar because Caesar really can't do much from this point. It can't hurt Vaporeon, it can't hurt this Arcanine, so... Here I just go for the superpower, and it doesn't do anything. Here I thought that he would just go for the flare blitz and finish me off, but he actually goes for the morning sun. And he goes for the morning sun because he apparently thought that I had a natural gift with uh, like the hidden power ground version of natural gift or whatnot, so... I might need to look into that and see if it's really threatening and viable on Caesar, but... For some strange reason, he switches out into Cammy, and I just go for the U-turn because I figure he's not going to go for a Will-O-Wisp again. He'll probably go for the Flare Blitz, so I should be able to send Salamence back in and take that Flare Blitz and try and get off some Earthquakes. But here, this Arcanine is like really a beast. Like He can switch in against the likes of an Adamant Salamence and take an Earthquake just like that. Like like look at that, that was like 30% damage, 30% and leftovers and you know then it has morning sun to heal itself so you know it's standing up to a Salamence and normally you don't see this, you know normally Salamence is the one forcing Arcanine to switch out so you know I have to give uh, M. Bison props, you know um, I might need to ask him what set, uh, like what's this Arcanine all about because I really like it, it really put in a lot of work this match and Argivald's is going to continue to Earthquake, and Ken is going to Morning Sun back up to max health, so it's pretty much like, Argivald can't kill this thing. This thing, like, is just tanking physical hits, just tanking them left and right, so... Once again, it's just standard Earthquaking, and here he's finally just going to go for the Flare Blitz. I guess that, I guess he had enough time to calculate what he wanted to do, and unfortunately... He ends up getting a critical hit, so I was like, man, he's getting lucky with these crits, but I feel I can try one more thing, and if this fails, then it's game over right here. I'm going to send in 
Madam Sticks and Bluff that I have Earth Power. Wow. This Celebi needs Earth Power, but it actually does, and it has Thunder Wave instead of Earth Power. So he actually falls for the Bluff, and I'm going to go for a Recover to uh, get my health all the way back up. Because I know that his Kami does not have U-Turn, and if it does have U-Turn, it did not use it. So here he's going to switch back out into Ken, predicting the uh, Leaf Storm to come. And I do indeed go for the Leaf Storm, but this Leaf Storm actually does a lot of damage. Like even though it's only 50% damage, it does a lot. So Modest Life Orb Celebi, you know, does do quite a bit of damage. And here I was like praying, you know, Please let this second Leaf Storm get max damage because if not, Flare Blitz is going to finish me off and the match is going to end here. So I was like, please get max damage. And fortunately, I get the max damage. So Ken finally goes down. Like, that, this Ken was annoying. He's just physical tank, physical beast. But now, Cammy's going to come back in and he goes for the Hidden Power Ice. So here I'm thinking, well... I figured that Hidden Power Ice may come, so I make the safest play and I just go for the Thunder Wave because from this point, I'm going to have to start recover stalling because if this Mianchao gets a critical hit for one, then it's over. So that's another thing. Pokemon always, you know, has those random critical hits, but here I'm just going to start stalling for a couple of turns because I have no choice. One, I'm at minus four because of those two Leaf Storms. So even if I do go for a Leaf Storm, this Kami will probably probably take about maybe 30% damage, that's it. And Hidden Power Fire definitely won't do anything. So I pretty much have a plan here. I'm pretty much going to spam Recover until Kami gets the Parahax, which Kami happens to get the Parahax now. And now I feel completely safe to call Madam Sticks back and send in Busts and Caps. And basically my goal here is that I want Cammy's health to get low enough to where when I send Madam Sticks back in, I can uh, faint Cammy with Hidden Power Fire because I don't want to have to use Leaf Storm just to faint Cammy and then Vaporeon comes in, survives the Leaf Storm, and then finishes me off with an Ice Beam or something. And you know, I believe I was very adamant about that plan working, and I know that. Miensha has very poor defenses, so I felt very adamant from this point that the Hidden Power of Fire would take the Kami out, so that's exactly what I'm going to go for, and this is going to easily clean up the Kami, and I uh, shook M. Bison's hand, and I told him, good game, it's a really epic match, and he shook my hand too, he's like, this was a very good game, and uh, what do you know, he actually has a Choice Scarf Vaporeon, and he goes for the Signal Beam for the win, so... I have to admit, that was genius for keeping the Choice Scarf a secret for the whole game, so... 